Hi, MVTC. We're at the clubhouse. Yay! Thanks for checking in with our first MVTC TV broadcast with Chef Rick. I think you're going to enjoy this. Keep an eye on your emails for future broadcasts coming out. This week, we're going to have Chef Rick that you're watching now. And then tomorrow, Thursday, we will have Heather showing you her world-famous Heatherita and playing a little bingo with the family. That's going to be a Zoom conference, so the email has a link and a password for you. And then next Monday, we'll have Jenny doing some fun things with you as well. Again, keep an eye out for future uh, broadcasts. Anything that we make, we'll put up on the YouTube um, channel, and it should be a lot of fun. Hopefully, we'll all be back here in the clubhouse soon and enjoying our home away from home. So coming up is Chef Rick, and stand by. Welcome, everybody. It's Chef Rick from the MVTC Kitchen, here to show you a little fun thing you guys can do with your kids. I think you'll have a little fun, get them interacting with you in the kitchen. might be really fun. So we're going to do a little play today on chicken and waffles. Everybody loves fried chicken and waffles, so let's give this a try. Okay, so I made some uh, fresh mashed potatoes. Everybody make their own mashed potato recipe that they like. I got some nice bacon I just cooked. Nice crisp bacon mm -hmm. and some nice chicken tenders. These are Rocky Range chicken tenders. Um, all the stuff you can get at the store or at Costco. <laughs> I also have nice waffle bowl cones. Easy kind to of do. Fun. If you want to make your own waffles, that's perfectly okay. But this is kind of fun for the kids. If you have an outdoor party in the summer, maybe, and you want to do something, you can get these kind of cones, and the kids can walk around with them, which would be fun, too. Yeah. So let's get started in constructing these beautiful things. Okay, so you get an ice cream scooper, and you put a nice scoop of mashed potatoes in the middle, and you can get some chicken tenders and put them around them, a nice crunchy chicken. Okay, let's grab a plate. Put it on here. Get some bacon. Mmm, <laughs> love bacon. Okay, get some nice rough chopped crispy bacon on there. Looking delicious. Okay, and then we go for our maple syrup. A little maple syrup on there. And you can use honey too, right? Yeah, we'll you show you a little alternative if you don't want to use maple syrup and bacon. But okay. first, if you want to hit it with a, make it a little more fun, you can put a little oh. sugar on it and bam, the kids will have a great time. And this is really healthy, right, Rick? Just yep. like anything made at the club, hey. it has no calories. <laughs> right now, no fat. right now, I think a little more fun and family participation is more important. Yes, so you can I make agree. it look like an ice cream if you want. Put a couple pieces on top. Again, throw some bacon over it. And before you know it, you can have another one to take with you. That's awesome. So try this if you want to have a little fun with the kids. And uh, I think it's good because it'll be interactive for them and get, keep them busy in the kitchen and might as well teach them a good life skill of cooking also. Sweet. So are you going to include this as a Wednesday night dinner when we're starting to do Wednesday night dinners again. Uh, we can try doing that again. Yeah, I think it would be fun. Yeah, Especially for, if we get a little activity from the kids. It would be really fun. Yeah, something for the kids. Okay. That's, I really um, miss everybody and I hope everybody's safe and sane. I love you all. Yay. Thank you, Chef Rick. <laughs> all right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's something for the kids to do at home. Remember, uh, if you just pre-make those items and get the, um, the chicken nuggets, uh, pre-made it's really easy to do with the kids so as a little bonus chef Rick didn't want to leave the adults hanging so um, he's actually going to show you one of his favorites uh, or one of your favorites clam chowder as we usually have at the lobster fest which will be this September I believe um, we will be open by then um, I know it and we will have a big party. But in the meantime, in case you want to make some of this at home, this is great comfort food for you to have while you're stuck at home on a cold, rainy uh, evening. So uh, stay tuned and we'll show you how to make Rick's famous clam chowder.
coming up. Okay, everybody, I'm going to show you my clam chowder recipe that seems to be a hit around here lately. Um, these are the ingredients we're going to need for it. We have some nice chopped sea clams. You can use half and half or cream, whatever you prefer. We have some Worcestershire, Tabasco, salt and pepper. We're going to have some onion and some celery and some diced potato. And I'm going to show you real quick. We got some garlic too here and salt and pepper. And butter. Butter One and of the flour. Most important ingredients. To make the roux. Lots okay, of so butter. Here we go. We're going to show you how to do everything Don't right be rude. Here. <laughs> Sorry. Don't be rude. All okay. right. Here, here we, we go. go. This is how you chop an onion. You peel it and you keep the... Okay, so you chop the onion, you're slicing in this way, and then you're going to come across so you can make nice dice out of it. And then you have a nice dice out of there so you don't have to struggle. There's no crying, there's no nothing when you're chopping this onion. It's nice Watch and your clean and fast. <laughs> as far as the celery goes, I got a little bit here already, but you just clean your uh, stalks, make a few stripes on them so they're about even. And then a quick chop wouldn't hurt on that either. Okay, now you have all your chopped ingredients. So let's go over to our pot over here. And we want to get it a little bit warm. Heat it up. Good boy. Things are a little rusty around here. You put it on high? Yeah, it's on high heat. Okay. We're just putting a little bit of oil so the butter doesn't burn. Olive oil? Uh, canola oil is fine. Okay. There's a stick of butter going in there now. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you're just letting that go. love that. We're letting this butter, belt, this butter melt down. We have an oil in here so the butter doesn't burn. Oh, is that how you keep butter from burning? Yeah, you can add a little of oh. that oil on a higher burning temperature. So now we can go over here and grab our onions and celery. And we're going to put those right into the butter. And we're going to sweat those vegetables for about two or three minutes. Sweat. See, if you needed a workout, you're working out with this video. So this is your sweat for you're the day. You're working up a little sweat. So now you have your celery, onion in here. You've got your butter that's melting down. Okay, now we're going to add a little bit of chopped garlic in here. Some nice chopped garlic. That's kind of optional, but I always put garlic. Garlic's never optional. <laughs> Okay, so now you're letting all these vegetables just sweat down. It's going to take maybe two minutes. The butter's going to all melt down and get all nice and delicious. Once all that's all melted down, we're going to get ready to make a roux. A roux is a thickening agent that you want to add to the soup. You're using a fat and some butter, or some butter for your fat and some flour. Okay, so once that all melts down, you're going to get your clam juice ready to go. Half and half, or you can use full cream half too, and half. right? Yeah, you can use cream. You can even use 2% milk if you want. But the more deliciousness you get, the heavier fat, you know, delicious. Yes. So now you're adding your flour into here. So you're making your roux. And you're just going to coat that around all your vegetables. Don't worry about making a mess. <laughs> That's what you got the kids at home for, to clean up. You got plenty of time to clean, I'm sure. Okay, so that's all incorporated now. Okay, now you're going to add a little bit of clam juice. Okay, so all of the clam juice is going in here now. So you can see it's starting to thicken up pretty good in here. You put the whole can in? The whole can, just the juice. The clams are still in here. Okay. How, uh, how, how much does this make? Enough for this a family? Make, oh, absolutely. Probably yeah. enough for about eight. Okay. Then we have some half and half, and I'm going to add about a cup in here. A cup? Yeah, okay. we can always add more later. We can always adjust the, soup, the thickness of it later. But here's about a cup in here now. Okay. So now it's loosened up Ooh. again a little bit. And guys, it's smelling really good. Now I like to add a couple of hits of this Worcestershire sauce. Three or four or five, six, something like that. A couple of hits of Worcestershire sauce. And some Tabasco. Oh, that's the best part. And some salt and pepper. You can always come back and season it at the end. A little chef pinch. Yeah, don't put too much in because you can add more later. And now we're adding some chopped potato to it. Mm. Okay, so now we can let this cook for a little while. Probably going to take 
maybe a half an hour to cook the potatoes through. And you just want to do them so that they're still a little bit firm, right? Yeah, you, you want a little bit of a bite to them, but you right. know it's going to continue cooking as it sits. So you might want to see what the consistency is here. It might look a little bit thick right now. So you might want to just put just maybe another half a cup of milk, or half and half. So we got like a cup and a half in here now. Like I said, you can always add more at the end if you need to thin it out, but you don't want to have to thicken it. Okay, so I would just let that cook for like a half an hour. So if you did need to thicken it for some reason, what what? Yeah, can you another use way to you could thicken it if you had to in emergency is you can use uh, some cornstarch. Mix a little bit of cornstarch in a bowl, maybe a teaspoon or two. Add a little bit of water to it, and then pour it in here and stir while you're pouring it, and mm. it should thicken it up. Or a little bit of instant mashed potatoes. <laughs> if you have any mashed potatoes <laughs> left from your wonderful waffles, but let's hopefully we don't need that. So we'll go from right there. We're gonna let this cook for like a half an hour. Okay, then you're gonna come back after it's been cooking for a half an hour and get all your nice clams that you have in here. Through the magic of television, it's been half an hour. Yeah. Oh, so the clams are already in the broth, so you wanna make sure you get clams and broth. Yeah, the, they're sea clams, chopped sea clams in the juice. So you're just using the juice at the beginning and the clams ah, at the end. Gotcha. And that'll keep the clams from getting too rubbery or chewy. And they're already cooked, right? They're already cooked, so you're just heating those through. Right. So probably about an hour from start to finish, you're gonna have a beautiful bowl of clam chowder for your family. Oh, and then you gotta make sure you have the, the crackers. You can have the crackers if you it, want. Or some yummy or, crusty sourdough yeah, bread. Yeah, you can get a little bowl of sourdough, scoop all of it out, put some garlic butter in there, toast it in the oven, and then oh. pour your soup in it. Quite delicious. And hopefully you enjoyed watching uh, clam chowder being made, and I can't wait to make it for you for real. Yay! Thank you, Chef Rick. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Bye. Okay, gang. Hope you enjoyed Chef Rick's little production of carnival chicken and waffles, as well as an added bonus of his famous clam chowder recipe. So make sure you make those at home and enjoy them. And then pretty soon you'll be able to come to the club and have Rick make them for you in person. So again, don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Heather showing you how to make a margarita as, or a Heather Rita, I'm sorry, as well as a little family bingo time. And remember, that's going to be a Zoom conference. And um, it the connection is on the email that we sent out. And then all of these videos, even the Zoom conference, I believe, if my technical skills are where I think they should be, uh, will be posted on the MBTC TV YouTube channel. So stay safe, stay home, and we'll all be back together here at the club soon. All right, guys. See you later. Bye. Spring at Ye Old Club. Oh, had to get a shot of the tree for everybody.